All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're going deep on a story of scientific triumph, the discovery of the hepatitis C virus. Now, you might be wondering, why does this even matter? Well, imagine this. For decades, a silent epidemic of liver disease was spreading, and no one had a clue what was causing it. Yeah, it was a real puzzle for the medical community. I mean, we're talking about a time when hepatitis A and B were already on the map. Big wins, right? But there were still so many cases with no explanation. It's almost like a medical mystery, right? People, and this is the really scary part, were getting blood transfusions, something meant to help them, and ending up sicker. There was this real fear surrounding it, and scientists were in a race against time to find some answers. That's where our first Nobel Prize winner steps onto the scene, Harvey Alter. He was at the National Institutes of Health, totally fixated on these post-transfusion hepatitis cases. And get this, he was actually able to show that this mystery illness could be transmitted to chimpanzees. So that's a pretty big clue, isn't it? It suggests that something infectious is at play, but the question is, what is it? You'd think with that piece of the puzzle, they'd crack it quickly. But that wasn't the case at all. Scientists spent over a decade, can you believe it, trying to pinpoint the culprit. It's like something out of a scientific thriller, really. I bet. More frustrating than thrilling for those researchers, though, I'd imagine. To know something is out there, causing such harm, but not be able to put your finger on it, that's mind-boggling. Exactly. And that's where our second Nobel Prize winner, Michael Hewton, comes in. He was working at Chiron Corporation, and he decided to tackle this problem head-on, using this, at the time, cutting-edge technique called gene cloning. Imagine, if you will, searching for a tiny piece of code buried within a massive complex software program. Okay, that's an analogy I can get behind. So how do you even begin to narrow something like that down? It was incredibly meticulous work, but Houghton's team, they were able to extract and actually clone DNA fragments from the blood of infected chimpanzees. Then came the really hard part. They had to analyze those fragments one by one, looking for anything that didn't belong to the chimpanzee. Talk about searching for a needle in a haystack. And they found it. They did. They found it. <laughs> it turned out to be this tiny snippet of genetic material. And guess what? It was a completely new type of RNA virus. Yeah. Something the world had never seen. And that that was the moment they finally had a name for the phantom. The hepatitis C virus. Wow. What a discovery. But finding the virus is one thing. Proving that it's the thing causing the disease, that's a whole other story, right? You're absolutely right. And that's where our third Nobel Prize hero comes in. Charles M. Rice, a researcher over at Washington University in St. Louis. Rice, he took on the challenge of proving definitively that this new virus was the culprit behind hepatitis C. So how do you even go about proving something like that? Well, Rice had this honestly brilliant idea. He took the virus's genetic code and he used it to actually build a synthetic version of the hepatitis C virus in the lab. Wait, they built a virus? From scratch. That's exactly what they did. It was groundbreaking, really, especially at that time. Oh. And here's the really amazing part. When they injected this lab-made virus into chimpanzees. I made them sick. So they really built a virus from scratch. That's incredible. And with that, Rice proved that this hepatitis C virus, it was a cause of this mysterious illness. Talk about a eureka moment. Right. Decades in the making, too. Yeah. It really highlights, I think, the power of collaboration in science. Yeah. And ingenuity, for sure. You've got these puzzle pieces scattered across all these different labs, all these different research groups, and they all come together to solve this huge medical mystery. But, you know, we have to remember, identifying the virus, that's just the first step. You're right. A diagnosis doesn't equal a cure. What came next in the fight against hepatitis C? Well, the immediate focus, it became about developing a reliable blood test. Remember, back then, people were still contracting hepatitis C from transfusions. I mean, it was a real risk. But with the virus identified, scientists, they could finally create a test to screen blood donations, which drastically cut down the risk of transmission. That's huge. It's like overnight, the blood supply became safer. It really makes you think about the impact a discovery like this can have. It's true. But the ultimate goal, the real hope, was to find a cure, right? And this part of the story, it takes another fascinating turn. Because developing these antiviral drugs, it's not easy. It's kind of like trying to, I don't know, disarm a bomb while wearing oven mitts. You've got to target the virus precisely without harming the rest of the body. Okay, that's a visual I won't soon forget. So what were the big roadblocks in developing a treatment for hepatitis C? What made it so tough? A lot of it had to do with the virus itself, honestly. Hepatitis C is an RNA virus, which basically means it's really, really good at making copies of itself. And mutating quickly, too. So it's like trying to hit a moving target. Mm. 
And a small one at that. How do you even begin to address that? It took time, tons of research, and a whole lot of brain power, but they figured it out, those mutations we were talking about. Well, scientists realized they could actually use those to their advantage. They developed this combination of drugs, and each drug, it targeted a different part of the virus's life cycle, like a pincer movement, you know, mm. attacking from all sides, making it much harder for resistance to develop. That's incredible. So they basically used the virus's own tricks against it. Genius. What kind of impact did these new treatments have? Revolutionary. For the first time ever, hepatitis C, it was curable. We're talking about a disease that was basically a death sentence for so many people and now treatable, manageable, beatable. Wow, that must have been a huge moment for both patients and the entire medical field, really. A real triumph. It absolutely was. But, and there's always a but, isn't there? Getting these life-saving treatments to everyone who needed them, well, that was a whole other battle. I can imagine. Was it a cost thing? Cost was a huge factor, yeah. Initially, these new drugs, they're incredibly expensive, which put them way out of reach for a lot of people, especially in lower income countries. And those were the areas that were often hit the hardest by hepatitis C. There's a, a harsh reminder that just because we make a scientific breakthrough, it doesn't mean everyone automatically benefits. That's a really good point. A sobering one for sure. So did things change at all? They did, thankfully. Over time, with a lot of advocacy, policy changes and more research, things started to shift. Generic versions of those antiviral medications became available, which drove the price down significantly. And then you had organizations like the World Health Organization. They stepped in to improve access to testing, to treatment programs, really, on a global scale. So it sounds like it was a two-pronged approach, uh, ah. scientific advancement and this huge global effort to make treatment accessible. That's what really turned the tide. Exactly. But it's important to remember that even with a cure, the story doesn't really end there. For a lot of people who lived with hepatitis C for a long time before these new treatments were around, the damage, it was already done. Right. We talked a bit about the effects of chronic hepatitis C earlier. Can you remind us what those are? Sure. So when hepatitis C becomes chronic, it's this silent, slow-moving disease. A lot of people, they don't experience any symptoms for years, decades even. But the entire time, the virus, it's inflaming the liver, and it just causes damage slowly over time. And that damage, if it's not treated, it can lead to some really serious complications down the road. Right. Eventually, that inflammation can lead to scarring of the liver, which is called cirrhosis. And they can lead to liver failure, liver cancer. It's a whole cascade of problems. So even though the development of these antiviral treatments was a huge step forward, for some people, it was this race against time to try to prevent irreversible damage. Absolutely. It really highlights how important early detection and treatment are. The sooner you know you have hepatitis C, the sooner you can start managing it, protecting your liver. This deep dive, it's been quite the journey, honestly. We've gone from this medical mystery to a huge scientific discovery to the development of a cure, and now this ongoing fight to get treatment to everyone who needs it. It's a story about scientific achievement, but also a reminder that disease has a human cost and that everyone deserves access to health care. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's a powerful story, and it's one that's still being written. And speaking of which, let's talk about where we are now. What does the landscape of hepatitis C look like these days? So even with a cure out there, the story's not over. What does that even look like now for people dealing with hep C? Well, you've got to remember, this virus, it's been around for a long time, you know, silently infecting people all over the world. The World Health Organization, they estimate almost 60 million people are living with chronic hepatitis C. And over 250,000 people, they're still dying every year from liver disease related to it. It's, it's a lot. I've got to admit, those numbers are higher than I would thought, especially after everything we've talked about. Why is that? It really comes down to a couple of things. Awareness is a big one. A lot of people, they don't know they're infected. Maybe they haven't been tested. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they don't have symptoms yet, so they don't even think about it. And then, of course, there's access to treatment, which isn't always easy. So early testing, it's still the most important thing, right? Absolutely. It's crucial. The earlier you know you have it, the sooner you can start treatment and prevent more damage to your liver. We've got the treatments now, but there are still hurdles. Like what What kind of hurdles are we talking about? Stigma, unfortunately. There's still a stigma around hepatitis C, and that can make people hesitant to get tested or to seek treatment. They worry about being judged. That's awful, especially since there are effective treatments available. So 
What needs to happen to really get a handle on this virus once and for all? Well, we need to do a few things. We've got to raise awareness. We have to educate people about hepatitis C, break down the stigma surrounding it, and encourage people to get tested. And then, of course, we have to make sure everyone has access to those tests and to treatment, no matter where they live, no matter their income. It sounds like a solvable problem, but a complicated one. It's going to take a global effort. What can people do in their own lives to make a difference? You know, even just talking about it helps. Talk to your friends and family about hepatitis C. Let them know it's important to get tested, especially if they have any risk factors. And if you're able, you could support organizations that are fighting this disease, either through donations or just by spreading the word about what they do. Yeah. Every little bit helps. This whole deep dive, it's been eye-opening, really. It really shows what we can accomplish with science, but it also shows how important it is to keep pushing forward, to keep fighting for access to health care for everyone. I agree. It's a story about ingenuity, about perseverance, and about the power of hope. We've come a long way in a short time, and that gives me a lot of hope for the future. Me too. And on that note of hope and progress, we're going to wrap up this deep dive into hepatitis C. Remember, the more you know about this virus, the better you can protect yourself and the people you care about. Stay curious, everyone. We'll see you next time.